Yo, you, you, you change something up here. They're still going to bank the blank, the though. So they don't want to risk. I don't know if it's, they're afraid of a first pick from EDG. That is but weird. I'm really looking at the pick and ban phase because I, I feel like EDG has gotten like every single pick they wanted in the last few games. The, the Annie, the Maokai as well to shut down this. I'm not going to call it one dimensional comp from SK Telecom, but these AD carry build up compositions that you can just shut down with a big tank like Maokai. So we're going to have to see what they change in the pick and ban phase. Whoa. Okay, so what are we setting up here for first pick if you're EDG? Because yeah. Rek'Sai is banned as well. Kalista, got, to me, this is a Maokai first pick. Yeah, we were thinking about first pick Maokai. There's also, depending on the jungle ban, you can force something like Nunu of Rek'Sai and... That could be the other yeah. one, but both junglers Gragas have shown Gragas already. Well, this so be a Gragas ban. The Jinx oh. ban I like. That okay. still leaves Maokai, yeah. Annie, Nunu or Gragas are split. Hecarim, Hecarim is well. open. Ooh. They should go for Maokai, though. Yeah. Because Marin, it's a denial pick more than it is. They can still pull off home guard TPs with Hecarim or Maokai, but this gives them tank line and team fighting and a denial pick. And SKT, so unless they want to play a more early game focus where they want to have some ganking power, then they can go for Gragas. But if they want to start really playing around these dragons, which is what they have done so well, which is what they did against Fnatic in game five where they took the Nuno, they have to take it here, then otherwise tail up should lock it in for himself if you want to play the same style. Sichuan is also open for him, so Clearlove has plenty of picks left. And with all these bans here, still surprised about the LeBlanc ban. I would at least try and trade it then and say, if you want to take LeBlanc first pick, we get the Maokai at least for ourselves. Definitely playing the steal away game right now. And waiting for the last pick. Maybe a Rumble, maybe a Hecarim. They don't really need to choose the top laner here since they already see one, but they do anyways to not Annie. really show. Too much, and he's open as well on the side of EDG. But you were saying it for SKT there. <laughs> yes, I would have liked SKT to pick it. We've seen Wolf play it. He's yeah. good on engaged supports like Annie. Oh, there You're go. giving Power once again. Picks. Why You're not? You're giving EDG, e EDG everything. Yep. Everything they wanted from before. They have ex close to the same setup. If they lock in a Nuno, and then we'll have to choose a different AD carry because yeah. Jinx is banned away. But proper for Nar as well is if you put him in situations where you can force team fights, then you play around his Mega Nar, and when he's sitting in Mini Nar dancing around a Dragon or in his lane, then you have that any hard engage coming in to force the fight when he's not ready. SKT has to decide the direction of their competition and composition in these next picks. Alistair would be great to try and push back all the initiation from EDG, but it's still so much of what EDG really wants in this one. Would they? Okay. That. This is a matchup. It's a matchup pick. They've already locked in an early Azir. It's not a for sure matchup when later on in the game a Cassidy can crush an Azir. Yeah. It's, something Pawn, it's one of Pawn's favorite champions. Faker Cassidy. Basically pre level six. Oh it is boy. locked in. Okay, this is. We are taking chances now. Woo. We are. We're stopping in Faker. We pick him that Cassidy. We now rely on him being able to snowball early game. Pre-level six, he's not going to do a whole lot as he is going to push him into his tower. But at level six, he can start jumping towards the Azir pick. And that's where it can become a bit annoying. And of course, late game, you have all that insane mobility where you can really start dancing around and always get into the back line of EDG. If they take this one, it's going to be a camp faker. Well, Clear Love's Lee Sin was legendary during the regular season in the LPL. A lot of people were saying Edward Gaming got hurt by the Cinder Hulk patch because he couldn't play Lee Sin anymore, right. and Pawn was having less success on his assassins. And it's been in this tournament as well that Clear Love has shown more strength on the tank jungles and Pawn more strength on the consistent damage dealers. Nunu still yeah. would have a Blood Boil target that's not Corky in Azir if they go with this composition. And the reason they take Corky here, we've already Azir locked in and a tank top lane, so. It is very magic focused, but they they want to have it so they can punish Cassidy in the mid game when he sits in his lane. He doesn't have proper wave clear to defend himself against Azir and Corky grouping with that Trinity Force and just poke SKT out. Because if you look at that composition at the moment, there's zero wave SKT clear. SKT needs wave clear. They have to go Lucian or Sivir if they want to add something that can protect towers. Otherwise, if EDG starts grouping around that 15, 16 minute mark, they can really poke down SK Telecom. Ooh, this is not going to be the wave pick. clear. Wow. This is this such a, a risk. risk. Comp. It's a huge risk here from SK Telecom. If EDG gets a little bit ahead early, if Clearlove can pull off some nice jungle invades, the wave clear just isn't there. The turret taking potential of Azir, as well as flank.
flank teleports from Koro could just snowball this game out of control. Yeah, now the thing for SKT, what they do have is this Cassidy in late game. Corgi is going to fall off. It's very magic heavy for EDG, so it's easy for SK Telecom to itemize against it, except for the fact that Cassidy normally doesn't go for Athens before like third item, so it comes very late. But late game, it's going to be all about Cassidy. Can he get to the back line and kill them? Otherwise, that's it. And the last thing I have to mention about SKT's comp is the disengage. Every single person on that team has a way out of a team fight, and that's something that could be crucial because EDG has been nothing but killing. But that's a problem when you're against someone who's going to outpoke you completely. You're not looking to run away. You're looking to stop them from hitting you in the face from long range and kill them instantly. Well, here we go, gentlemen. EDG has pushed the midseason Invitational Finals to game point against SKT. We are about to get on the rift. Everybody here in the Donald L. Tucker, Tucker Civic Center is ready for this game to happen. A lot of people thought it would be three in favor of SKT with the strength they came into this tournament with. A lot of people wanted five, and SKT now have that chance with picks locked in. Head over to Twitter and use the hashtag EDGWin or the hashtag SKTWin. And get your votes out onto social media. We saw that vote getting a lot closer as EDG is on a tear right now. Two game streak, looking for three in a row to take down SKT. So for SK Telecom here, they need fantastic laning phase to make sure EDG cannot group up early and start pushing down these towers here. Israel and Alistar is one of the most boring lanes in the game to play because all you do is sit back and you just farm. You have a heal on the Alistar, you have the long range poke from the Israel. You don't really look to do a whole lot before you hit level 6 and there you can start looking for all ins. Slow play again in the early game. Definitely much more measured here as EDG comes in. Once they find the lanes they want, then again, they go kind of crazy. Well, it was such an interesting start in the last game because they went for these defensive openings mm -hmm. with defensive line wards, and then around 1 minute 15 seconds, the AD carrying support recalled back to do a delayed lane swap. But the thing with EDG is they're so strong in the lanes as well. It's been such a tremendously entertaining series to this point. And this time, SKT, as we've said, have taken that giant risk that needs a lane phase victory. We really have to put most attention into the jungle pathing of Bengi and Clearlove here. And yeah. where do they try and get their first gank off? Because if Bengi doesn't get something going early and Clearlove gets up to his side stone quickly and starts controlling the map with wards, SKT is going to be in a lot of trouble. Again, you guys were mentioning junglers starting at camps now for the faster level two gank. Looks like we'll get clear love his red right quick. The top side will be pretty focused on the Krug, so different start for the junglers here as we get game four underway. So once again, no deep boards coming in. EDG here wants to spot the lane swap. They see Bang, he's trying to group up the minions in the top lane now and get a freeze going for himself. They should just go straight to the enemy blue buff, at least warded here for Mako, so you have vision on where SKT decided to start with their own jungle. So both junglers starting on the strong side with the AD carries, and they're now looking simply to trade blue buffs with each other. Good read on that by Mako as well, knowing he can safely get a ward quite deep into the jungle, and this will be clear love, making sure that happens. Gonna happen on the top side as well, mirrored here for SKT. That means it's going to leave Baker and Pawn to their own divide here in the mid lane for a while. The big thing that happens when you split sides of the map right here is mid lane can become a very dangerous battlefield depending on whether or not the top laners abandon ship, which both of them are in jungling. It's the mid laner who ends up getting the brunt of this aggro. That could be one of the reasons for SKT freezing the top wave here. They want to make sure Benki can go mid lane, doesn't have to sit and potentially dive if someone like Koro shows up in the lane and therefore try and get a few early kills on early advantage for this Cassidy who is going to be pushed down. Azir is in full control of the lane the first few levels, but you can see how EDG, they're ready for this one. They're around the mid lane as well. Three guys potentially coming for a gank. They want to start this one off right. Easily could have lost somebody there, but they figured they had the pressure, and they're going to still they start to be bottom. aggressive. They have to go bottom lane now because they didn't get a freeze due to them pulling for the Nunes. So by them moving down to Tribush, what they want to do now is make sure SKT can, can make it to tower, at least while the minions are still alive. And Ooh. they basically do it because by them backing away, most of the minion wave is already gone. They probably feel happy enough saying, okay, TP came down late because he couldn't see where we were. If we can sneak a dragon now in time, 
it's not an e the easiest dragon. They are very low level, and there's not like SKT doesn't have the people here. They have the speed shrine, but there are a few people in SKT that Oh, dragon resetting! Ball. Stopped at 1,600. Smite is not up for Bangies. He comes in here. This might be the fight focus for SKT. He flashes off the wall. Deft is level three. Flashes for the vision as well. First blood for Deft on his Corky. Barn hits Nard. Hops out of that one, and EDG again pick up first blood. It was a nice thought, but at the end of the day, SKT had their AD carry top side. They did the lane swap and then still tried to contest the early dragon. That's usually the sacrifice you must make in order to do that lane swap. It ends up giving Deft the double buffs, and Bangi's crucial early game start means he's lost his oh, double buff Moro. already. Flashing gets out nicely on that one. No rotation really going to be able to come from Pawn here. He was going to back. There he is. He's got a flash. He figures it out. They only have a bit of mana onto him. There's the soldier attack. Does Pawn pick one up this quick? Wolf is there for the protection. So, while we have all this action on the bottom lane, Bang is still sitting with the wave frozen up there, but he's on his own, and that's what Koro realizes. So he's teleporting in to try and get some farm and push the wave out. But look at Bengi here, he's already on top side. This is very risky for Koro because he's very far up the lane and he just used Flash. This should be a kill for SK Telecom. Yeah, Koro's not going to be able to do too much about this one. Level four and a level three, just feeding off the tree, and that's going to be level five for Bang here as he gets a nice lane. You cannot make that play if you're the top laner because the wave is frozen so far off the lane and you have zero wards on this side of the map, so you don't know where the enemy jungler can be. Coral, very greedy for some farm. Could have walked all the way up because the wave was stuck there anyway near the tower. Coral is one of the greediest players. It's rarely punished, but right there you can again see it. That's, this is the farthest Koro has been behind in a game. No kills or assists, as well as denied farm, and still just level three. It's gonna be kind of difficult for the Maokai to pick up farm in this matchup, which could prove fairly critical as they look to take turrets. Luckily for him, Marin didn't manage to get anything himself, because he walked bottom and got a few minutes, and then he had to try and stop this dragon here, so he didn't really get to sit and pick up a whole, a whole lot, only got boots, so. For now, it is even. Marin can, however, itemize Hexstringer, upgrade his boots for some more magic resist very early on and become super hard to deal with for the Maokai and even for the Azir if we do see a roam coming up. Nice little hit to keep Deft in lane for a little bit longer. Faker returns after being pressured, still is up in CS and chooses a blasting wand for his first item. Keeping that CS easy, keeping him in lane. Level six for him now. Yeah, the wave's been at near Faker's turret the whole game, and he's done a very good job of picking up the CS. Pawn has actually forfeited a few CS, roaming down for the skirmishes we've seen, whereas Faker has pretty much been farming that entire time. But now that he has got his Rift Walk, especially if he can get to Rod of Ages sooner, he'll be able to retaliate a little bit at Pawn. Koro desperately trying to get deep vision control, kind of caught when doing so. A lot of pings going down in the river for Bang and Wolf's rotation, but Faker is already here with Pawn. Nice Emperor's Divide. That's definitely the disengage. Faker can get a kill this early. That's going to be great. The true shot arrives from Bang is spot on. And Clear Love may be number two. Eagle Eye Bang heads in for a double kill, maybe even a triple. Oh. One over the shoulder, and he doesn't pick it up. I don't understand what Koro is doing in this game here. EDG just had to play a standard laning phase, then start grouping when they had Trinity Force for Deft, and yet he walks into the enemy jungle again with zero vision. No flash. Yeah. Gets caught out. Three kills now for Bang on his Ezreal. And he's not even close to his power spike, too. This is a tier vamp scepter Ezreal early. There's no way he should legitimately be able to oh, pick up three kills in fights. But because they found picks at the right times, Bang is set up to explode around 20 minutes. Found the picks, and Koro decided to just give the picks over, honestly, to SKT twice now. Good start for them. They need this so badly for their comp to work, to not get punished by the lack of wave clear. Oh, SKT chose themselves into a comp where they needed to get ahead early. Bangs trying to do that for the team. Two assists to Fakers. Pass it in. Not going to hurt at all either. Death's early kill here. Keeps him pretty safe in lane. He is, does have that phage. He can get some trades in. As long as Bang doesn't go back and start to outscale him too hard. Mako just on the side, seeing if Bang will get any, any more edgy here, or antsy rather, on the fight. But both supports are here. We're going to go back to the duo. 
Not too much pressure coming out of the jungles right now. Everything's being cleaned up. Seems like everybody's kind of taking a breather there. SKT only has about a 700 gold lead right now. But it's so important that they have that 700 gold lead because it limits the amount that EDG can push and poke them as long as SKT has threat while they're outside their turrets, as well as bang with that early tier and the three kills to soon turn into some combat stats. He's not getting mercilessly pushed in by the Corky Annie lane. Also, because of all the roaming, Mako yeah. is only level three, which means he can't provide that much threat in a 2v2 now that they're actually in standard lanes. SKT have been able to also set up a few of their classic pink wards around. You saw one with Pager moving to this blue buff, meaning he can move around fairly safely. And if SKT or so EDG starts a fight down towards this bottom lane, they should expect the Castellan to come down for him, unless, of course, there's ZS still sitting there pushing. But now both mid laners have roaming potential. Typically, though, the Zia want to try and push the tower instead and just right. put as much damage on it as possible. Chip it away slowly, make it easy for the ADK to come in later. Whoa, Daft realizes the mana pool of Bang. Goes in hard, oh, gets the flash for the summoner heal, but Daft also has to use his. This means Wolf's coming in. You already have Bangy just by Dragon. He body slams over the wall. The teleport by Koro is actually canceled for pressure, but he probably wishes he came down now because Bangy's on site. Wolf's gonna be able to get the pulverize on Namako. The headbutt back first to make sure they solidify the kill here. And I think they're gonna go ahead and give it over to Bangy with the little body slam. EDG, for some reason, feel like they have to make plays in the early game. Deft flashing in after. Bang just popped his heels. The rocket didn't even hit him. SK Telecom quickly to respond here. Gets a kill, starts a dragon, because Nuno was on the top side. They're getting everything they want in this early game. Well, that percentage of first dragon goes up now for SKT. They have turned it on in game four when it matters. Baker has not been doing too much other than holding down mid and making sure Pawn isn't getting too much of anywhere, which I guess is a lot, considering yeah. Pawn was going off by this time before. Yeah, and there's 2,300 gold on Bang, so he's still powering up. Look at Oren! Marin sweeps Koro right under the rug as they try to do -si do in the top lane. Marin bouncing back in this one, but it's all because of the early game and the lane swapping Koro behind, and he's not playing as such. He's still posturing like he's this monstrous Maokai, but he clearly is not in this one and SKT is taking this early game by storm. I don't know if it's Fager being supping in or anything, but this is a completely different game suddenly. Absolutely. EDG just Baker has sat at his turret for the majority of the Yeah, I mean, but I just don't know what it is. I mean, obviously it's not about Fager's performance at the moment, because all he's doing on a Kassadin, funny enough, is sitting and farming. There's not really anything else for him to do at this point. But he is keeping e uh, Pawn farming as well. Pawn would have been yeah. roaming, getting a few kills by now. They also focused their first kills onto Faker, yeah. double turret dive, and didn't get anything, whereas EDG would have already been a few kills up the past games. And this whole setup, if it continue, continues like this, yeah. it means that Faker, give him about 15, 20 minutes, is going to start going completely crazy in team fights. And it becomes tough for EDG suddenly to win it. When you have also this Corky who's going to fall off, in terms of the damage and the focus will be on their Zir. Pawn's also gone for a more aggressive Morel and Omicron build instead of an Athene's build against Kassadin. So he's very prone to being assassinated once Faker will get more and more points. I think that's also kind of why EDG is pressing a little bit because in a, in a world where SKT has the slight lead in team fights, it's a hard thing to judge because Faker might be able to just delete Pawn in team fights, in which case the late game carry potential right. for EDG would not exist. But you're running a comp still that needs at least one item completed. Corky pre Trinity Force is not that strong. It's too early. You get that Trinity Force, that's where you hit a massive spike, and that's what you use. Before that point, you technically don't have to do anything, and that's simply the weird thing with the way EDG is playing Koro randomly walking in. This guy has been so good in the last few games. Now he's already died three times. Seems like SKT has definitely made their own adjustments necessary throughout this series to make sure that didn't happen again. EDG, we've been saying this, they've been getting comfort picks. Still have them in this game on Mako Zanny, Clear Love's Nunu, and Koro's Maokai, but just a different aura here coming out of SKT, whether it be Faker or just the fourth game pressure of game point here from EDG. Aura really of, making them change. Or of Faker. Teammates have 20% more skill and enemies make mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> it's global. Definitely a global aura there. A thousand gold lead here for SKT.
It's been growing slowly, but they are able to make inches into miles very fast if they get the room. Looks like towards the bottom lane here for EDG. No pressure from SKT as they know it would be too dangerous. So, once again, we have seen this time and time again oh. for Clearlock. When they have a chance to take a tower, he's going to walk down the lane, just pops a blood boil on his AD carry, and they take down the tower for them. So, very, very simple play. Trinity Force should be completed for death when he goes back, and now you can start moving him around. Dragon is not alive for a few more minutes, so you can send death to the top lane, push that one in on the north, take down the top out of third, and then focus on mid after where the Castellan is still sitting and not really able to defend himself. SKT needs to read that it's going to happen soon and swap Faker out of this lane once the Corky comes in there and you have to put someone else to try and defend. It will have to be Bang, even though he doesn't provide that much wave for himself. Yeah, and it's that big wave clear discrepancy in this composition that allows EDG to try and get in some fast pushing. Once Death goes back for that Trinity Force, they'll have pretty good power in their lanes when they group up and they need to try and out-rotate. Even if they end up trading a few turrets, EDG should be able to come out ahead on these trades because of their ability to clear waves. Pawn already with the mid lane pushed up. The question is, Death needs to run either top lane or mid lane and keep this up. Instead, he's going bottom lane to match. Rod of Age is now stacking up for Faker. He's got two on that. Mermana, or I'm sorry, Man Immune. 340 of 750 right now for Bang as he finishes that to get it built up a little bit quicker. The spike for SKT, still a bit away here. But they've been making the moves yeah. to make it 5-1 to one now. That score very reminiscent of what EDG would have by now. Step 1 is, of course, delaying your outer turrets going down. The first one, about a minute ago. Def hasn't moved out of his lane yet. He's still, still in there, trying to push it back before he moves over. Dragon is obviously spawning as well. That's why he doesn't want to go top lane at the moment. Want to be around it. SKT got the first one. And we can just see Marin oh, already. Is that going to be a flash, on. Alistair? Let's see. I don't know. Clear love. Somebody just pinged him out. Pawn should definitely know this is going to happen. Top lane fight's going down as well. Won't get a teleport out of these guys. Doesn't look like Marin has enough of that Narbar just yet, but he'll still get a few attacks as mid is still about to party here. Back and forth. It doesn't look like anybody's going to go for the full engage, though. No, oh, I lied! Faker Rifts walks right out of the Emperor's Divide. They're mainly trying to push down this turret, though. How much damage can they get onto Faker before this push? And they're going to maybe force this game right here. True Shot Barrage will come through to clear this shortly. The Triforce is finished. Nice, there's the True Shot Barrage. Pawn shifting Sands to the outside to make sure he is safe. Deft way too far forward with the exhaust on him. Ignite still ticking. Deft goes down, and the team has to retreat. That's the kill threat that SKT needs to be able to bring in order to win this game. There's a window here that EDG has to try and push down the turrets before SKT's aggression can take them down. That's a big loss for them, the fact that Faker could pick up that kill and stop the push in its tracks. Saw the move, though, from them sending Corky mid lane to push on this Kassadin. Backfired for EDG. Will get at least oh, got some damage on the tower. Dragon is alive. Yeah for SKT if they want to go down and try and force it. But up in this top lane, still going at it. <laughs> Marin, he's winning the lane, obviously. No also care in the world. He can simply just stack magic resist against the comp from EDG and against the Maokai. So he's very strong at this point. He's by not even completing a full item. A much different matchup for Koro now, not being able to adapt quickly. Once he's down, he has been ahead. Not really used to this situation within the series. Clear Love trying to add as much pressure as he can. Here comes Koro's teleport. He's going to finalize that one. The smite still going to Bengi, and it looks like EDG may get a bit of the cavalry here. Koro is trying to tank everything. He goes down to Bang. Now 4-0-2. SKT very low, and this is going to be the pawn cleanup. Shifts over the wall. No, that's Death that goes over the wall. He's got the scrying orb, and they're they're gonna gonna but again, a little too far ahead. Is it enough to pull the team back, though? Make it over! And throws everything. Everybody into the wall! SKT try to get back in the fight. He goes down. It all looks so good for a second, but it was just the flash. And Mako comes back in with the plays. Crazy fights right there. Meganar salvaging the kills to make it 3-3 three to three after that one. Dragon is secured, though, by, B by Bengi and SKT, so they are up 2-0, a far cry from where they were last game. Way better this time for SKT.
These fights lasting absolutely, not forever, but quite a long time. More and more members always able to join, uh, join the fight. Look how far back they are. And they go all the way to almost second tier turret. Yeah, so Marin comes in with TP in Mininar for himself. So he's not really doing a whole lot yet. And EDG feel like they can chase Mako with the flash tippers, oh. getting two kills. But then look at Marin here. Getting that Mega Knight, Death playing it super aggressive, jumping Ooh. over, taking a lot of damage. And as soon as Marin gets the Mega Knight, yep. close to the wall for EDG, that's the turnaround and end up trading. Deft again this game goes a little bit too hard and greedy there. He's done it in the bottom lane with his flash burning both summaries. He did it there, allowing a bit more time for Marin to charge up his Mega Knight. EDG stays on the offensive. They want to get these turrets down. And that's the thing, EDG doesn't really need to team fight. They have to group up as a team instead, or at least with their Zia and Corki, and start putting pressure on towers. They don't need straight big or big team fights because that's where SKT still has a chance with a Kassadin. I mean, a Kassadin won, won games where you fight all the time because that's what he's good at. So for EDG, if they slow it down and start playing around towers and poke instead, they will have the advantage over SKT. But it seems like they've just been looking for more and more fights. And it's not been paying off. This top lane tower should be the next focus with Dragon gone. And they're moving straight up there. Oh. Little soft scuttle out and getting that vision in. Scuttle crab control going over to EDG here. Baron is alive. More force in the fight, if anything. And SKT is going to give them the, the room they want for now. With level 11 on death, the missile poke is really enhanced right here. So this is this is the forced group from EDG, and SKT yeah. is just going to try and trade turrets and get it a little bit more farm on Faker. Now they need to go back. Oh, well, they have to consider the fact here, how much can Bang do in the mid lane, and how much can Faker do in the bottom lane, because there's still five men pushing. There's something you can do if you feel like you have the stronger tower push, because you have so many guys here. Try and see if you can force SKT to back. How many towers can they get? Bang is in the mid lane pushing in. Vega is far away from the bot lane tower, though. They almost have to react to this. SKT is going to be able to defend much, much more. And I think well, it's going to be another one. Not a huge minion wave coming in for Vega. Can Iron stop the recalls here? Good damage on that turret to prep it for later. They're going to try and get three for two. Depends how much Vega can get. It's already been a two for two. He is going to get SKT had the minion waves prepped for when EDG went for that two man oh, push. My. And that's a huge win there for SKT. We were watching some of the games EDG played in the OPL Finals. Whenever they stopped running these comps that had to just dive straight onto the enemy backline in these big team fights, they seem oh, to struggle out. quite a bit. They're doing the same now here with so much poke. Coral taking a lot of damage down here. Just straight up greed farming right there from Coral. They just lost both their inner turrets. They had spent the last minute and a half on the top side of the map, so therefore there was no ward coverage and no confirmation that SKT had left. He was just trying to pick up the farm. If he waits 10 seconds, it comes to his turret anyway, and he gets it for free. But he goes out with his impatience and picks up his fifth death of the game. SKT now with all the time in the world to set up wards. They have two lanes pushed all the way to the base of EDG. Definitely a different game here. 106 for Faker. Bang has been flying off the handle this game. Five, one, and two. And you cannot forget about Marin in the top lane with a little bit of help. They have finally shut down Koro in this series. And it's hard to see EDG have an impact now as they cannot go in. Seems like the composition is working against them if they can't yeah. continuously dive. They've simply not been able to properly use the poke and the siege they do have. They yeah. don't prepare minion waves. They don't look at where SKT is positioned. And they take early fights where they don't have to. So EDG has not been playing the comp. SKT. Full credit to them for taking advantage of it, getting all these kills here. And you have a very fit AD carry, and you have your Kassadin already hitting his two spike yeah, items that's now. Yes. That's the big one. I wonder if Vega is going to go with Thines next. He's not running any cooldown reduction, which you normally do in that build, because it's about stacking as many Rift Walks as possible, getting off as many as you can in the fight. Then you go out of mana, but because you have a Thines and so on, you get a lot of mana back on kills and assists, and you use that to kind of like get a reset. But because he's not running cooldown reduction, you might see him just go for a different kind of build. Slow pokes back and forth. EDG definitely keeping their distance. We're going to see Core to the top lane. Teleport is available for both of those laners. See if that comes into play here. EDG is actually hoping SKT kind of engages. They don't want to step outside yeah. their boundaries right now. I also want to point out the importance of the Aegis rush that we've seen by Bengi right here. There's 
So much magic damage by EDG right here, especially with Corky as their main yep. physical damage dealer, still doing about half magic damage. Aegis, soon to be Locket, the magicers are stacking on Marn. The efficiency of the itemization SKT can build in this game is making these fights much more difficult. Engaging on a Mega Nar. Yeah, just about to gnaw out the whole team. Side swiping from the bottom as well. He gets Pawn and Mako. Mako, can he deliver the Tibbers back into the fight? Marin trying to dodge out. Now Bengi onto Pawn nicely, keeping him far away from doing damage. But Bengi finds himself as the main target now. He will not go down. That's Grievous Wounds. Now they're on to Clear Love. SKT has managed to get themselves in a good position, but they all have very low HP as they skirt around dying in this fight. Faker starts to pick up kills, goes in Zanya's. That's actually going to be a kill over to Bang, and they won't finalize. May go out. Faker gets the Force Pulse double kill. Here comes Koro, though, and he may be able to pick a few up. He's just going to have a dance with Wolf and not be able to provide much. And the last few games, it was SK Telecom who didn't have the damage to take down the tanks of EDG. Now it's the other way around. Marin and Benki just jumping in the face of EDG, tanking up everything, buying time for Bang on this Israel to poke people low, and then Vega can come in and he can just clean up the kills on this Cassidy. Great team fight for SK Telecom. And they've managed to survive what would have been a weak early game. And we're now to getting to that point where their comp really kicks in. Yeah, especially when they can get the Man Immune transformed to a Muramana, which will happen in about 50 more stacks. It's not done yet, though. SKT was so low from that last fight that they yep. had to recall, and EDG's trying to sneak it. They may be able to teleport to this one, though. We saw Koro use his, so it is going to be Marin that's able to make it in. The Narbar's halfway full. Dragon is going to go over to Clear Love. It's something they needed to get those stats in. Marin is in a great spot to stop anybody from getting away. Pawn over the wall as well. Everything's happening in retreat right now for EDG, and SKT is just layering on the damage. Only able to find Koro here, but I think Mako is going to be a second kill as well, and that is another double kill for Faker's Cassidy. Faker getting fed at this point. 5-0-6. This is when he starts just blowing people up. Zonia's Hourglass Power Spike, needlessly large rod on the way as well because he's not needing to respect the damage output of EDG right now. He was just meditating early in the mid lane. Get ready hey, for all yeah, this. That's what it's what you does. do on Cassidy. Exactly. You just sit there, you tell your team, just wait, <laughs> you know, give me a little bit of time. And exactly as we predicted with the Cassidy thing, as soon as you get to two items at least, you yep. get to late game, or well, to the later team fights, you really become super powerful. And EDG has been forced to itemize very defensively in some ways. You can see Defty is going to go for Bloodthirst, or at least building towards it, because he needs to be able to survive this castle and jumping towards right. it. That's not the maximum Corky build he can go for in the mid lane. Scepter coming in second item for the Azir. Could have gone at Athens into like a death cap, but then again, you have so much magic damage that you need to reduce the MR of SKT to get proper damage out there for basically all your members. Uh -huh. And therefore, you need the Scepter. What a ridiculous way to be able to pull out a wild card. One of the only teams in the world that switches out their mid laner, and this is not to say Easy Hoon is any less better than, than Faker it's a pretty either, good way wild card, though. either way around. But just to do that to make your strategy better for the situation, not many teams can do that without having troubles, and these guys do it on the fly, paying off here greatly in this game. The style of play with somebody carrying now from mid lane is what SKT needs. Let's see. The five as we see 20 minutes, 28 minutes, I should say, coming up on the clock. Clear love. Trying to get some deep vision in, but still getting aggressed here. Can't do too much. In order for EDG to win a fight, Pawn needs to have some free time to allow his sorters to auto attack with Blood Royal. That scaling is still ridiculous, even when there's a lot of magic just on the other side. So if Mako can land a nice Tibbers on Bang or Faker, there's a QSS on Bang, so he can get out. It basically has to be Faker at this point and get a good chunk of damage out. That's the way EDG maybe wins a team fight. Uh, Outside of that, SKT has all yeah. the ways to keep re-engaging. And now with SKT being so far ahead, they don't need to necessarily go and try and, and take down a tower with the Cassidy. No, you play around the Baron now, so you have full control of that river, meaning EDG never gets 
into a situation where you can have your carry sit safely in the back because you should have everything warded up. But you have so much mobility on the side, mainly due to this Cassidy, to always get the flank on EDG, especially once you start prepping with pink wards. And that's exactly what they're doing now. Setting up just missing one ward out here, two of them being placed in different places for EDG where you don't normally have a pink spotting them. And that's what they're trying to rely on to get some information on where SKT is. Seeing where the differences are in a bit of the lane CS. This game, Marin up about 15, but 3, 1, and 5 is making him a monster in these fights. Numerous ultimates have set SKT up to clean these fights up. Mainly Faker and Bang in the early game really helped to stop EDG and stave off their early aggression. Carrying this through now to 30 minutes. Getting very tough for EDG to take any of these fights. They just have to watch. Yeah. Luckily, EDG could control that one dragon, but the Baron is what SKT gets to control now. They have such nice pick potential right. in this jungle. It is also potentially good for EDG if they can trap SKT in a corridor with an Emperor's Divide, but it's unlikely with the way SKT picks their battles for something like that to happen. It's a good hit on clear love. Um, from SKT there, playing a little bit of the, their own poke game, if you will, before the fight starts, and just really giving themselves <laughs> great... Still the ward outside. Still the ward right next to the small bush where SKT is sending four members, so they are spotted. Deft also decides to use his trinket. That's really clever. He's scrying orbs them so they're less suspicious of the ward, because otherwise yeah, they would have games. Assumed and swept that area. There's also no upgraded sweepers yet on SKT, so in order for them to find that, uh, they'd have to just sweep a really odd area or have a raptor smite proc from yeah. Bengi. About time SKT upgrades their sweepers if they're looking to close this game out. EDG finally putting a little bit pressure back onto SKT. Last time we saw them with a Kind of a big run was towards that top lane, and they lost a lot of their turrets. Now trying to put their foot down. They're going to gain back vision on this dragon. But like you said, Jap, they got to have some crazy clears. Actually, that ward already died. So they're good. They put a pink down. Yeah. So EDG using the fact that the mini wave pushing on the bottom side to have SKT go back and clear it out and give up this area here around the Baron. So at least you get to clear a few wards. You buy a little bit more time if you are EDG, but it's not really going to be a whole lot easier for you to fight because of how strong Kassadin will be in the late game. And Faker not going for their themes. All right. Instead, straight to death cap for him. It's been a while since we fought, so there's 10 summer spells up in this game right now. This dragon fight could be incredibly huge. It's no longer the Baron they're posturing over, but Scuttlecrab control for EDG. They're actually going to be the ones that try and force this with the teleport in from the backside. They can't find Marin. He's close to Meganar. Let's see this. Home guard comes in, wears off, so a little bit of that pressure is down. Koro throws down the ultimate. Can they close the gap, though, from the side of EDG? They're still on the back. Pawn is getting time to work those blood-boiled soldiers, but all SKT does is back up slightly, and they are completely now able to zone the fight. Pawn dives in. Emperor is defied, so they can fly towards the back line, and Bengi hits up Deft immediately. He flashes over the wall. A nice Foss Bomb to take down Bengi, and it looks like Deft trying to skirt around the fight cannot do so. SKT is just able to reposition themselves so fast. This this composition can jump, hop, body slam, and rift walk. You just can't get away. And that engage from EDG sending in your mid laner in the middle of the SK Telecom team here. EDG, all they had to do was keep running back and just poking with soldiers and rockets, try and wear SKT down. Instead, they went all in. And the worst thing is Pawn ate the exhaust as soon as he flew in as well, so the Emperor's Divide wasn't even able to burst. SKT, oh. though, I have to credit them for their ability to disengage. That's the main strength of their composition, the in-out-in-out in, gameplay in team fights. Alistair can headbutt anybody back. Kassan and Ezreal cannot be stuck on, so when they do find that window to fight, when Pawn finally gets impatient and tries to go all the way in, SKT completely wrecks them. 32-minute Baron going over to SKT here, 20 to 6. Like I said, this score is just looking like something EDG would put up as SKT starts to turn it on. Yeah, because Coral actually ends up taking more poke than the rest of SKT does right now. 
in order for Ezreal to poke in, Faker having the flank over the side, as far as the poke battle goes, SKT was winning this. So Pawn decides he's going to try and make a play, but it's just not on the same page as the rest of his team. He can't even flash over his Emperor's Divide afterwards. Yeah. So he's really trapped in the middle of the fight. And at this point, it's a one fight for SKT. They had such a good setup, EDG, with the soldiers blocking the river, making sure that SKT couldn't really move further. It's only been the tanks that was being poked down. It was two versus one, basically. Only the Ezreal really poking from SK Telecom at this stage of the game. And we just have to say, these team fights, every single one has been in favor of SK Telecom. Faker, six kills on the Castle, and eight kills for Bang on the Ezreal. It's the right people getting all the kills for SK Telecom. Yep, and those fights are going to be even harder now. Jack, you said 10 summoners were up, and most of those summoners are down now for EDG with still SKT, the ability to hop and jump, like you said, kite the fight or fight it if they want to. 35 minutes on the clock. SKT now starts to bear down on the last second tier turret in the top lane. Looks like we're going to have Marin pushing the bottom as well with Faker coming from the mid. There's still no Void Staff on your AP carry if you're EDG at this point. He has no last whisper for your AD carry either, even though that's not even going to be the main item you need because you have already fallen so far off as a Corki. But the fact that your penetration items are so delayed by you trying to buy some more defensive-minded items is a big, big problem. If you look at all the tanky stats for SK Telecom already built up, there's just so little damage for EDG at the moment. Deft yeah. is shooting a brick wall when he hits Marin right now. I'd say another big story in this game is the fact that Coral hasn't been able to force initiations. He's so good and such yeah. a critical player in EDG's success. He has fallen behind for minute one, and every attempt he's made to come back to the game has only yeah. put him farther behind. Great split push here from SKT, since EDG, even when they initiate, doesn't have the damage to immediately burst someone, so SKT can support from any front, and now they're chipping away these turns. This isn't the game we're seeing the Talisman of Ascension on Mako and the Righteous Glory on Koro. He's going more defensive for himself, Mako, this time because of how far ahead SKT is. We've already seen a turret go down with Marin in the face of Koro, so he's not going to be able to stop much in the bottom, and SKT is just whittling away at the turrets as they wait for more minion waves. Now to the mid. This one's already prepped and ready to fall. They are onto the inhibitor turrets. Like I said, Marin's going to drop one in the top by himself, and it almost calls the whole team over to see if they can take him out. You almost have to fight as EDG. It's just you can't get your mitts on this slippery SKT team. So yeah. They pulled so far ahead right here. The instant EDG commits, SKT can jump on the exposed backliners. I love the way SKT is playing patiently here. The body slam in, getting clear love out of the fight so they cannot be zoned with that absolute zero. And it doesn't look like they're going to be able to use many of their ultimates at all. Mako gets out of this one. He still has Tibbers up. Using that stun accordingly is going to be big, but all he gets is a Polaroid of himself going down when he flashes that one. 22 to 6 is the score for SKT as they start to close the door on game four. We are going to go to a full five here in the finals of the midseason invitational. SKT dropping the last Nexus turret. Minimum in when minion waves on the way in. It's not going to matter. They're going to pull it off. We're going to game five. And that was such a weird early game for EDG. Walking randomly into the jungle of SKT Tele Telecom, being caught out, picking fights, flashing forward. Instead of taking the same sort of engages they did in game two and game three, where they seem to be in control, knowing when to use certain power spikes here. They gave so many kills over to SK Telecom, and they just took everything and used it to completely take over the game. Yeah, they had many of the same picks from the previous matchup as well. But on SKT's side, they changed a lot which I think changed the complexion of the moves that EDG was trying to pull off. We know that they're a team that overreaches at times, and they were definitely overreaching. Remember, they started that last game three up six kills to zero, and sure. they were probably trying to re-emphasize something like that because it didn't work, and SKT made the adjustment. With Faker, we're going to game five. We are going to game five, and we are going farther than that. For more on that series tying win, let's 